So the story of the aliens within For the Love of a Glove is a pretty wild uh, incorporation into the story of the Jackson 5. For the Love of a Glove was a story that laid bare all of the intertwined and complicated events, people, and societal choices that combined to create the mythic character that was Michael Jackson. It's the true story, the true story of Michael Jackson rising to stardom. In the musical Thriller, which is the name of Michael Jackson's glove, lands on Earth from his planet Basilam with his brothers. To rule the Earth! Let's rule the Earth! They meet the Jacksons, and when they meet the Jacksons, they're not talented at all. That is until Thrilla and his brothers take over and give the Jacksons all the talent that they need to become the Jackson Five. I had worked with puppets before, hand puppets, finger puppets, rod and stick puppets, but nothing as technically advanced as the puppets in For the Love of a Glove. These puppets had gears, they had electronics, they had everything. The show used puppets because they were dealing with pretty serious subject matter, different types of abuse. There was emotional abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse. And nothing shows the love like a well-timed snack. Oh. Now take your home with more seriously, Jermaine! And when you're dealing with something like that, especially with someone who actually did exist, you need puppets because it kind of helps remove the audience and the actors a little bit from reality because puppets are great at showing idealized or heightened versions of a character. And there's really nothing they can't do or be because they're not real. So they were perfect for this show because you've got aliens and children literally being manipulated. So it was a match made in musical heaven. So I had no previous puppet experience when I joined the show. What I did have though was access to a puppet master Robin Walsh. We actually went to puppetry camp and it was pretty intense. One, because I'd never trained before and two, because it is an art form and it takes a lot of training. Puppets have a long and rich history going back at least eight to 10,000 years. So they were often used in religion because they are a pure character. And even Marionette comes from Little Mary where they were figures used in the Bible and medieval mystery plays with the church. In the puppet camp, we were given this freedom of movement, of discovering new body movements and contortions and just uses of space that then translated so well when we actually got our puppets. In the show, we used two main styles of puppets. One were literal hand puppets for the aliens who wore gloves so that the hand could be a hand. We didn't try to disguise it. Using both of my hands for the one puppet, especially with the gloves, that was a fun trip in and of itself, especially being a feature as the puppeteer on stage along with the puppet. That was the first time I've ever been able to say, you see me as the puppeteer as well as the puppet in this show. And what brings a puppet to life is that moment when the audience and the puppeteer work together to imbue this inanimate object, this dead material, with life, which gives them this special power to kind of speak to a deeper part of our psyche. Aww. Everyone knows what a human hand looks like and can do, and it's a very powerful form of communication. So it was very important <laughs> that we retain all of that. So then we decided to add eyes, because aliens always have light-up eyes. Wow. And a mouth flap. Hey there, I'm Run Sa, and I really wish I was back home. Come on, don't you love it here? So with the hand, we can show emotions. We brought in an amazing mm. hand puppeteer, Tim Legasse, wow! who coached <laughs> on emotions within the hand that you can create. All the aliens were right-handed, which means all the performers had to lip sync with their left hand. This little contraption here triggers all of the motions on Run Sa. We got the mouth parts where I can shoot the little trigger here. All the lights are buttons here, and you know, if Run Sa's going to sleep, he's gonna just curl up into a little ball and... <laughs> and only recently have puppets really been associated as a children's form of entertainment. And a lot of that has to do with the advent of television puppetry, which got kind of people locked into the notion that puppets are for children. And there are myriad styles. So one wonderful thing about the show is we were able to go in and really find the style of puppet that works for each character. And for the Jackson 5, we had practically life-size 
human style puppets because they had to do human dancing and human movements. But we made sure that we revealed the human performer behind them so they could see the duality, the audience could see the duality of the role. So let's go over how to put him on. He's one of the full body puppets, so he's got the arms. Mm -hmm. And the arms are sympathetically strung, so if you move one, the other one can move. And then he's got a mouth trigger and a head control. And then he's got a waist belt and then two shin connectors, which is where we'll start. Okay. Velcro. At about normal height, so all the weight when they're doing this is suspended on the head. Then attached on the hip. We are attached. So, and in the head, there's an opening in the back with a center rod control that's got the mouth trigger on it. How you doing? And it's there, so you can actually put your right hand in, and if you need to gesture with the left hand, but it's also centered, so you can sure. swap. And then puppeteer the mouth with the left hand. She's right. And gesture to that side. Hello. Hi, Mr. Gordy. Give me some skin. Ugh. What was really interesting, one of the main things to coach them on was the focus of the puppet. Where is the puppet looking? And where are you looking? And that it's a duality that you can play with because if you're focused in on the puppet, the audience watches your face, they'll follow your eyes to the puppet, which will bring them back into the puppet. But there's also moments where something so important or shocking is happening <gasps> that both the puppet and the performer change their focus, driving the audience where to look. Um, it was pretty challenging learning how to dance with the puppet because we were learning choreography that's kind of complicated if you're doing it without puppets. So you add puppets to it and the challenge ratio goes up to 11. So we spent time learning how to make the puppets speak, learning how to make, to become one with the puppet. So I, I kind of consider Jackie Jackson um, my co-star in the play. Not my puppet, but my co-star. What I had a habit of doing when we first started was I would have Jackie kind of slouching because he's so heavy. You kind of have to do some push-ups and some shoulder shrugs because you've got to be able to hold Jackie up so that it looks like he's standing because he is a person. And he, if you have him standing like that, it takes the audience out of the performance. So part of the fun of working with the puppet and the puppeteer here is that you can have some fun little games to play on stage with both, you know? You can have a little fun with Jackie, but then go up to the puppeteer and be like, what are we doing here? You know what we're doing you here. You know what we're doing. You know. The hardest part of talking to the puppets here, it actually came when I had to try to control Michael's puppet. Because it was a really nice moment where because Michael, Michael was being manipulated by the record producer, we had the record producer manipulate Michael, pulling it away from the main performer. Daddy, you can make them into stars. Child stars, children, easy to control. <laughs> he wasn't designed for me, so it was a little tricky for me to get up in there so I could control Michael as Barry Gordy. I'm Michael, and I'm 10 years old. Now you're eight. What? <laughs> <laughs> what, no, no, I'm 10. Children. Under my control. How old are you, Michael? Eight years old. But I got it down and we got it right. All right now. These puppets, the technological advances in them, like how much work was put into these puppets, without that puppet camp giving us training wheels, I don't think we would have been able to drive full throttle once we got them. But once we did, we just took off. Oh, who are you? I'm Corey Feldman. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Goonies, Lost Boys, stand by me. Oh, well, uh, you're not a star like little Webster here. <laughs> I, can't I think it really blew people's minds to be like, oh, you can do this with puppets too? Right. Uh, yeah. And seeing their minds get blown, that was, part of the fun of being on stage. You see people go, wow, and like, yeah, we did that with puppets. Michael Jackson, the world's greatest superstar. Thank you.